When you look in the mirror, what do you feel? Fearlessness, austerity, masculinity, godliness. But what does your beard say about you? Get definitive results with the bold, natural scents from the Manly Badge of Dignity Beard Oil and ignite the king in you because it's important to look how you feel. Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ bless you. Hey, it's that time again. We need you to subscribe to the IUIC Phoenix YouTube page, all right? So make sure you go ahead and subscribe right now. We need your help. Shalom. The DEA is calling this, this the single deadliest drug threat our country has ever encountered. It's linked to nearly 70% of overdoses here in the U.S. and the number one killer for young adults. More 18 to 45 year olds died from fentanyl overdoses last year compared with COVID-19, gun violence and car crashes. I was 20 years old and I hadn't done it yet. I would say everything, all your dreams, everything you want to do, just if you want to do fentanyl, kiss it goodbye. Why do you say that? Because it stops you. It stops you. You're number one priority is fentanyl. Hey, yeah, I'm going to tweet something down in the school, man. We got an irresponsible person out here, man. Right here at the bus stop. I don't know if he's going or not. I think he's still he not. I don't, he, I don't think he's breathing no more. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. 27 down in the school, man. Don't nothing change, man. Shalom, shalom, Officer Tobias, IUIC Arizona, Cuss from the Streets, Fentanyl Edition. Uh, today we have? Angel. We got Angel. And Nima. Nima? Yeah. All right, it's a beautiful name. And today I have? James Cooper. Who do I have? Brian Beverly. Brother Brian Beverly. All right, so we're out here to talk to our people about just what's going on in the streets, um, try to get the perspective of, you know what I mean, what we're experiencing day to day, right? So we're gonna ask you guys a couple questions and then kind of go from there, okay? Okay. All right. So the first question, um, it says, have you ever used drugs? Yes. Okay, what about you, Nima? No. No? Okay. Water. Water? <laughs> okay. Um, and then, so, if so, what kind of drugs have you used so far in life? Like marijuana and, um, I have, I have once, I have taken SSC before. I shouldn't have done, I shouldn't have done it, but I, it was an experience, so I have done it before. Um, and I didn't need to do it. Um, my experience about it was just... Uh, if you call marijuana drugs. So you would, so you would say just weed? Yeah. Like weed and marijuana, okay. Yeah. And what drove you to, what drove you to that point of doing marijuana? Uh, peer pressure, just uh, normal demands of life, distress, family issues, neighborhood, where I'm coming from, right. you know, in Mississippi. Uh, also, is my own curiosity, too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I used to use heroin back from 1985. 1985? 2000. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um... What start? What drove you to start using drugs? I sold a lot of heroin. Sold a lot of heroin. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what what year was this? Uh, two thousand. I mean, nineteen ninety-seven and two thousand two. Okay, so back in the day, in the nineties, you were selling heroin in the nineties. So, Nor in North Philly. Yeah, North, North Philly. Philly. Okay, it's kind of rough out there, right? Mm, well, if you lived in that yeah. neighborhood, but I lived in the suburbs and just went to the city. Gotcha. So you started off selling heroin, and then you eventually started using the heroin. I used heroin first, and I seen how lucrative it was. Then I began to make money once I got away from it. Gotcha, gotcha. So you used it first, then you started selling. Got Do you currently still use drugs? Like you mentioned marijuana, anything like that right now, or no? Well, not, no. Well... 
And there's no right or wrong answer. We're just trying to get honest feedback, right? Right. Yes, I do smoke marijuana still. Okay. And is so is marijuana your drug of choice? Yes. Okay. So this second half of the next question is, have you ever used fentanyl? Oh, no. Nah, the rumors about it, the uh, music about it, or the information about it is bad enough for me not to try it. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know what it smell like nor look like, but I done read stories about mm -hmm. infants getting a hold of it or passing away from it or adults passing away from it. So the rumors and news enough is for me, you no, know, never to go that way. <laughs> so the side effects, the side effects of what you heard were just enough for you to stay away from? It. Definitely. The result, nine times out of ten, is death. Mm -hmm. Okay then, right? So, cause it is, cause that's one of the that's one of the pills that if you you keep chasing that same high after the first time you get it. Yeah, most definitely. That's normal. That's no, That's the normal case of getting high. Mm -hmm. You always want to return back to the high or even better, but you are never going to achieve that goal. But you rethink that, mm -hmm. you know. But it's never going to happen. So it's a useless journey or a vain pursuit, if you want to ask me. Uh, what is your drug drug of choice? You know, marijuana. Marijuana, marijuana right now. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you stopped using the heroin, uh, and and now your drug of choice is marijuana. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, have you ever used fentanyl? No, sir. No. Well, they cut it. They cut the heroin in 1992 in Philly with fentanyl. I overdosed one time, but that was it. Okay. So so they even had fentanyl in, in the 90s. You saying? In the 80s. Oh, they had fentanyl in the 80s? 92 in Camden, New Jersey. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, got you. And you say you overdosed four times on fentanyl even in the 80s? Yeah, cutting it with the dope. Oh, wow. And that's what they used to cut it with, too. Okay. As far as on your side, Angel, um, do you want to stop using uh, marijuana or drugs? Yes. Okay. And if so, what are some of the solutions that you have right now, or do you have any solutions on how you're going to do that? Um... My solution is for me to go back into school okay. and to make sure that I get myself back in order, get a job, and make sure that I get my, my life in track and not keep being distracted. Um, and that's one thing that I want to accomplish in my goal. That's a heavy thing you said. Get your, your yourself back in order and start setting things in place to where you can be able to focus without distraction, right? Right. Do you want to stop using? Stop using marijuana or whatever? Stop using any and everything, especially alcohol. Anything involving tainting my system. Uh, I would say that me, ambitious as I am, you know, I thought drugs and alcohol was the answer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually stepping me from reading and my goals due to the fact that I chose drugs over my education and my ambitions and goals. So okay. in the balance scale, education is the right answer. Okay. So you would say the drugs that you did take or whatever the stopped you? The consumption of drugs and alcohol stopped me from from reaching your maximum potential, is that what you're saying? Most definitely, uh, stepping me reaching my maximum potential okay. in life. I mean, in life. So right now I'm in the negatives, okay. trying to make up for it, you know, like internalize it into some positive. Okay. Right, so it is exactly. So sound like we been had fentanyl out here, even in the '80s. It, it's just catching on now. Well, it's catching on out here now. But back then, when the East Coast, it was '89 when they first started using. Okay. So now it's just catching on over here on the West Coast, but they've been had it in the East Coast, you saying? Yep. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, do you want to stop using drugs? I don't use drugs. I smoke weed. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you want to stop smoking weed? Uh, no. No? no. You're just going to stick with the weed? Well, I'm not going to say that because my changes on the course, but right now, no. Got you. Okay. Got you. Uh, what would be some of your solutions for somebody that would want to stop fentanyl or stop doing drugs? What would be some sort of program? I had to do it four and a half years. Got you. Mm, yeah. Go to a program. Sure Sure and, and and that's that's heavy that you said that because we you like our tenth interview that we've done throughout this uh, edition, and most people that got clean and off drugs they went through a program. Yeah, I went through this place fifty two twenty five West Novak Way. Uh, I forget the name was Joseph. Uh, it was uh, something 
program, but she allowed me to pretty much do two and a half of that. Gotcha, gotcha. And then she much paid for that. You was in the, uh, in there for two and a half years? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and that helped you get off drugs and got, got clean and sober? Yeah, that's when the light clicked on that you okay. had a problem. Wow. That's a that's a big thing. A lot of us get caught into things when we we see things and we get distracted from what is most important, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's good. Um, do you believe drugs play a big role on why many people are homeless today? Um, yes. Okay. Um, so why why do you think that it plays a big role? Because. And there's no right or wrong answer you know what i mean and it's based on your experience right i know it's just the reason why i'm like this is because like one i know that i'm i might be wrong with myself and my family that's probably gonna watch this but i don't do any of those drugs or anything like that so it's like it's a little hard because i'm in there and i I experience a lot and I just want me and my mom to get out of the situation even though we have to be in, well we do not have to be in the situation, it's just, it's a little hard. Do you believe drugs play a big part in why, why people are homeless today? 100%, 100%, like the only direction is down after drug use. Once you start, you know, it's, it's hard to break away from that cycle or that habit without no strictly strict, like friends, good uh, surrounding atmospheres. But uh, in order to achieve drugs and alcohol, you have to go to some of the scummiest and dirtiest places on earth to get that. And so you're putting your life in danger, taking those risks. So it drags you in into that cycle of homelessness and whatever else, you know, whatever involves that. And so once you get in that cycle, it's hard to break back out, you know, and okay. uh, you lose hope, become hopeless. You know, hopelessness from drugs and alcohol got me this, this to this place right here. Lost hope, lost confidence, all because of those actions I've made. Drugs, alcohol, and all that. So. Yeah, sure, they ain't working. Right. Two bitches ain't uh, getting in dope. Got you. Got you. And and are you currently homeless? Oh no, I got a part, man. No, okay. no, no. We homie you don't play that. Right, right, right. <laughs> Have you ever been homeless? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Were you were you homeless when you were uh using the drugs? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So once you start once you got sober and you got clean and went to the sober houses, that's when you started to get your own place and get things in okay. order. I started working. I was working at Mom Rose Chicken. I was making between fifteen hundred and two thousand. I mean, Two weeks. Wow! Wow! He's making good money. Right. Okay. Okay. So, and that's that's uh, that's why we come out here, brother. Because a lot of people are stuck on the fentanyl. They stuck on the heroin, but they feel like there's no way out. But you a testament, a testimony that if you go to get sober, you can sober up, and then you can get your life on track. Go get some access and show if you really know what you're looking at when you go to the place. Right. There's a place in Mexico on um, hook. Right. So, so you, so, so you telling the viewers and telling the people there are solutions mm -hmm. to getting sober. Yes, sir. We're gonna bring out a couple of scriptures real quick, and just goes into touch base on a couple of things that you said. Because the first thing you said is that you wanted to set your life in order, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna show you out of the Bible how to do that. Because a lot of times we know what needs to be done, but we lack the understanding on how to do it. All right. Go ahead and read. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 1. Wisdom reacheth from one end to another mightily. So the Bible says that wisdom, the wisdom God gives us, it reaches from one end of the earth all the way to the end of, other end of the earth mightily. There's power and wisdom, right? Read. 
And sweetly doeth she order all things. And sweetly does wisdom order all things. So wisdom is going to be how you can set your life in order. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 37 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. But be continually with a godly man. Do what? Be continually with a godly man. Because a lot of times, the, uh, our, a lot of times, what we deal with is environmental. It's not generational. The environments we've been in continually is going to continue us to have us in the negative, have us at the bottom, have us um, at the bottom of the barrel or whatnot. Yeah. But God gives us the God, the Bible is the basic instruction before leaving earth, right. right? So God gives us this instruction to do what? But be continually with a godly man Breathe. whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. So now you need to get yourself around people that are commandment keepers. It ain't right. just the 10. It's more than that. You see what I'm saying? It's love is going to be going into love that neighbors yourself. Correct them when they messing up. Definitely. Eating the right stuff, not doing weed no more. Yeah. Being on that sober route because why? Read what you got. Whose mind is according to thy mind. Because if y'all on two different things, like like you heard, I know you heard this expression. You hang around four crackheads, you're gonna be the fifth crackhead. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> that makes a hundred percent sense, you know. That's that is the end result. Mm hmm You know, constantly rubbing shoulders with other like people, you right. know what I mean? Like if we hang around, if we congregate more with brothers and sisters and fellowship with one another as we are supposed to be doing assembling, we wouldn't find ourselves in positions like me, <laughs> where I'm at. <laughs> Rubbing shoulders with the non brothers and sisters. Right, exactly. That's why God put, put it, God is putting us here right now to give right. you this opportunity to get out of that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You should get around like-minded individuals that's gonna keep the commandments of God and tell you when you're messing up or help you when you need the help. Right. A lot of times we'll just get food from somebody and then they'll just push us on out the way. Right. That ain't that ain't how it works. You're supposed to be around a nation of people that want to do the same thing you want to do. Right. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom. So the Bible says to fear God, that's all wisdom. If we feared God, do you think that we would choose to do drugs? Uh, uh. No, because we know there's consequences from it. We see the results. People become addicted to drugs. We have uh, situations where we end up, like you said, homelessness can come from spending your money on drugs versus get getting uh, money paid towards rent. Things like that, right? Yes. So there's consequences that come if we don't fear God, right? So read it again. The book of Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 20. The fear of the Lord is is all wisdom. So the Bible says to fear God, that's all wisdom, right? Read. And in all wisdom is the performance of the law. He said and in all wisdom is to perform God's laws. So when we start to perform God's laws, that's how he starts to set our life in order. Because wisdom is going to set, is going to sweetly order everything in our lives the right way. Does that make sense? Read what you got. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. Read. He bringeth low and lifteth up. So God is out of control of all of that. He going to bring you to a lower state, but guess what? He can bring you back up as well, as long as you keeping the commandments of God. Right. He can bring you, he can pull you poor, be a lower state or whatever. He can, right now we de f spiritually dead right now. The Lord can give you an opportunity to wake up. Yeah. To rise up from the ashes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like Ezekiel 37 or whatever. The Lord can do that. Continue what you got. He raises up the poor mm -hmm. out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill mm -hmm. to set them among princes. To do what? to set them among princes Please. and to make them inherit the throne of glory. So God said he can make, he, he can turn the simple Negro or whatever to, to be ruling this earth. Yeah. That's what our true role is, to rule over the world. Yeah. But the only way we can do that is keep the commandments. Do you mind if we show you some uh, biblical uh, scriptures? I'm having time. I'm okay. thinking right going to the no world. No problem, no problem. No, no. Uh, we appreciate you, brother. You got any closing statements for the people? I mean, do whatever you got to do just to survive, but you ain't going to get no vacation off of uh, girls. No. Hey, we appreciate you, my brother. Hey, that's cuss from the street. You heard it here first. The brother got sober. He was even on drugs since the 80s. And, and now he's still out here. He got sober, he got his life right, and he's, he got a job and he got his own place, but he knows the effects of doing drugs and, and the homelessness and the epidemic that's going out here in Arizona. Um, uh, the brother obviously lacks the laws and commandments and, and keeping the Bible. When we want to bring out the Bible, he walked away. Um, so he doesn't have
have the, the whole solution on how to overcome this wicked kingdom, but he has some solutions on how to overcome his addiction. But the biggest addiction is the lies and confusion and religion and this false ideologies out here in, in Babylon. And that's what we really need to overcome along with the drug addiction. And the brother did half of the step, but he's not all the way there yet. Our people need the Bible as the solutions. That's what we need to do is repent as the chosen nation of Israel. All right, with that, I say shalom. They want us in prison. That's mm. what they want us on. Mm -hmm. They control us, you know what I mean? If we got more people like you and us, and we got more people to, um, to um, educate others on things like this, then I think the community be better, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Hello, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example.